Hey, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Astro Life on Instagram special episode again. Yeah, we are living in a very, very busy time. We have a special every special episode, maybe kind of a well, uh, twice a week or something. I know because at this moment, I think since last week, we have a lot of things going on, uh, include the the uh, riot in Paris, and uh, I mean now it's spread all over everywhere. We have like two weeks ago, we have the the Titan uh, submissible uh, crash things, and then that recently we we have the the Russian coups, and also at this moment we don't know where is that uh, head of uh, Wagner private uh, merchandise thingy, and so where he's where he is, I don't know. But nobody knows. As people say he is in in Belarus, but some people say he is uh, the Belarus president say he is back to Russia, and also we also heard about the um. I, I think why I, why I was waiting for uh Stefano. I was trying to learn how to pronounce that uh, power plant, uh, nuclear power plant, uh, called Zaporizhia. A nuclear power plant. So, okay, I think uh, because um, since early this week, we heard about some rumors about the first, say, uh, Russia going to uh, explode it and they already withdrew the army from it. And uh, my friend Stefano, you know, we both, ast uh, mountain astrologer, really just like uh, when we hear about something, we kind of uh, uh, send a message to each other, say, let's look at the chart and something, and we decide to run a quick uh, podcast uh, today. Okay, so let me invite. First, let me invite uh, Stefano to join me. So, yes, um, while we are waiting for Stefano, I think he was just certain ready. Okay, and uh, welcome to join us. And uh, but if you have any um, any any comment or anything to to feed any feedback, please just leave the message there so we can read it. And if you have any question, also please just leave there, and I can I can I can answer it. And I think I want to one of our uh, followers. I say, oh, is that today or is is that five p.m. or six p.m.? Yes, it's five p.m. But we just delay a little bit, okay? And I'm just waiting for is Stefano ready? I don't know. Um, I maybe I'll try it again. Ooh, oh, we have a little bit problem. Let me try. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> yeah. Hi. How are Perfect. you? Perfect. <laughs> we made it. Yeah, we made it. I was like, oh, yeah, right. three times. It doesn't work. But you yeah. know, today is one, one of those days. First, we couldn't blend Mercury retrograde already been used for thousand years. So, but I think today I decided to go to blend the uh, Mars, Neptune, Queen Kunks, and the from the Yoda with Pluto. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah, it's good to find something to blame in the skies, right? <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's How are you, bro? I'm okay. I'm very well. It's today's a busy day. I have a three podcast to run. Oh, I just yeah, like I feel that. quite interesting. I'm like. A, I don't know how I do it, but uh, I think it's very interesting because um, uh, two of like, uh, one of it is already monthly, and then um, I have the uh, with uh, um, uh, Christine Skinner. Is usually we would decide any day after for when I should choose either today or Monday. Say, Let's do it today, and then we talk about the the Ukraine Ukraine thing. I say, what should we do? When should we do that? I think I don't want to wait for too long because uh, you know since I I. I, I I enjoy to discuss it before things happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, Definitely. I mean, yeah. I mean <laughs> yes, and the, I was, as I just beginning talking about that, the Russia and the Ukraine thing, like, I think mm. since last mm. week, last week, uh, the, the, what, what his name? Uh, Prico King, right? Prico King. Uh, he is like, a, he, he started March to the Moscow, and that was a kind of a, a little riots and a little, not riots, a little 
upheaval. And you and do. People get, yeah. Uh, people get. I don't, I don't want to say everyone, but uh, see, people get a little bit confusing, exciting, but it just lasts for that kind of one night or one day, and things all falling apart. And yeah. then we just say, okay, now we wait and see. Now we wait and see what they're going to do. And now, very soon, from early this week, we heard about that they are going to destroy that nuclear power plant. And that was stuff from you. You sent him a message. You said. What? Not again. Yeah. So, how about the we? What from what chart and what point we should start? Yeah, probably, Rod. We can、uh, start by saying what seems to have been obvious、uh, to most astrologers: the fact that we have been through a,、uh, I would say, ten days of intense planetary energies,、mm -hmm. and again and again, it's the reactivation of the same. Uh, degrees of fixed signs.、Mm. Specifically,、mm. in this case, we have been struggling between Taurus and Leo. So one of the interesting things is that this recalls the long Saturn Uranus square that we had in 2021 and、yeah. 2022. You remember how we struggled、yes. to move forward from the pandemic issues, and then、yep. the war came along with the new Mars Pluto cycle. We have talked about this in the past for those who have been following、yep. your podcast. And、uh, you know, it feels like we are reactivating the erratic energy. So obviously, this has been、uh, caused by、um, the squares of Venus, which is about to turn retrograde. By the way, so it's in its shadow; it's weakened somehow. It is in a very uh, uh, sensitive position, I would say. I don't necessarily take negative positions、mm -hmm. against planets which turn retrograde. You know, that's a bit too traditional <laughs> for me. But I, yeah, I, I like to give,、uh, you know, to, to give out this possibility of seeing planets which turn retrograde in a positive way as well.、Mm -hmm. Obviously, they come with a need for revision, but still. So、mm -hmm. Venus will be making three squares to、uh, obviously Uranus. So it is a long story which has just started, and then that came together with the、uh, square of Mars from、mm. Leo as well. So the two have been, you know, Mars and Venus. They have been moving along, Leo,、uh, pretty close to each other, and now they will get further apart. But still, the fact that they squared Uranus was so important. And、um, we have discussed already about the fact that the middle part, especially the beginning of the third decade of、uh, fixed signs, is quite important in this conflict. Mm -hmm. Because we see that in certain charts,、mm -hmm. mundane charts of relevance, you know, we see it in Zelensky's chart. Yeah, we see it in the alleged、uh, Putin chart because we, you know, there is an there is a reported time and date of birth on、yep. Astro.com, which is the database I normally,、uh, one of the databases I like to follow.、Yep. Obviously, is、uh, it's, it's checked by various、uh, respectable astrologers, but. You know, it's、uh, there are people who question that date and time, and I I, I find it a valuable point. But still,、okay. if we use that chart, I find it interesting that we get twenty two degrees of Leo and Aquarius、mm. along the mid heaven、um, IC axis or the meridian axis of Putin's chart. Interesting.、Uh, there are connections with the one of the Ukrainian charts,、mm -hmm. the Ukraine independence chart, with twenty six degrees Capricorn rising. So,、uh, let's say. 19 to 22, 23, Leo is quite important, and、yep. we—that's where the storm has been raging, right? So,、mm -hmm. do you agree,、uh, yes. Rod? What do you think? Yeah, and it is very interesting. I mean, especially <clears throat> you draw my attention toward to this uh, uh, last decade, last ten degree of the fixed night, especially beginning of the、yeah. twenty and the twenty-two. And、uh, it was pretty interesting. Yes, it related to I think the the、um, The first, I mean, I I don't want to sound like I keep mentioning that, but、uh, that Venus Mars、uh, Venus Mars、yeah. a kind of approaching each other is a key for whole situation because we know in the early of two thousand twenty two when Russia start to invade Ukraine and、uh, Venus was conjunct with Mars and Pluto in that position.、Yeah. The second thing is at this moment we have Venus approach Mars, but we know it, like you say, it will win retrograde, and、yes. that is a pretty thing. That also in end of the uh, uh, Leo, and、uh, you mentioned that yes, Zelensky himself has this 
have a few planets in the in the end of a uh, big side and uh, so is Putin. And uh, I think the uh, uh, Ukraine also has the has a few degree. And uh, not only I mean I mean I mean every part involved in this event should have that degree. So I check something, I find out something quite interesting. I mean, there is a chart. Some astrologer use it. Um, I mean, um, I'm not sure I'm, I might usually use it, but uh, I, I do feel it's an interest chart is the Russia. Uh, the first one was a Russia flag raising. So not really yes. independent, but most people take this independent <clears throat> chart and that has a 22 degree uh, uh, Scorpio conjunct with Pluto. Yes. Um, that, that is so interesting. And moreover, yes. when they end of a, a Soviet uh, Union system, that was, you look at this, Venus was racial gray at yes. 22 degree Leo. I think that's yes. our attention again. Yes. Okay. Okay, so this summer, I yeah. think uh, like uh, this morning when I chatted with Christine Skinner, she said in the financial market, this summer is not a quiet summer. It's a little bit like <laughs> when, when yeah, it comes it when the, maybe like yeah. 1998, I remember. She said, she, she saw I was too young to remember. <laughs> I said, well, I was 20 something yeah. that time. And I remember the, the Russian economic crisis and the Russian rubble was a falling terribly. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the first time, and I was studying Australia. No, first time I started question about. Uh, you know, financial situation and political situation related to astrology. And I remember that time. So she said this year should be something kind of similar. I said, I agree with her. Yeah, could be. Yeah, and, and, and thank you for mentioning the flood raising chart of uh, mm. December 25, 1991. It's actually exactly the, the same chart that I actually pulled out from um, Dr. Nick Campion's book, yeah. with the book of World Horoscopes. Um, and it's actually the same chart I used when they had the riots in uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. Uranus mm -hmm. was exactly at the midheaven. Yeah. So uh, that was a key moment when I said, well, this is a valuable chart for mm -hmm. Russia. What's mm -hmm. more telling than a transit of Uranus to the midheaven of a mid mm -hmm. the mundane chart mm -hmm. with such a major nation? And yes. the threat that it has is having on the leader. Obviously, at that time, it was um, more about issues with Navalny, and we know how it ended. Uh, mm. But without going too far back in the past, you know, we mm. can add to the list of charts that you mentioned, the Bel Belarus chart, for instance. Yes. You know, there's a factor at the mm. end of Leo. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the, the chart that we discussed uh, last week about yeah. the Zaporizhia nuclear oh. plant. Yes, it's interesting, right? Interesting that the, the, the beginning when they started, uh, they commissioned it, they commissioned the first yes. reactor because there are yes. several reactors there. It's a huge plant. <laughs> there was a um, there was a um, an aspect pattern in that area of fixed signs. So, definitely, whenever you activate 20, we can extend it to 20 to 25. Obviously, you consider white orbs and uh, planets, and uh, you know, which are a bit towards the end of those fixed signs, you do recall a huge. Uh, heritage here and astrological heritage which goes back and it would probably be interested interesting I haven't had the time to do that kind of research but to go back and look at previous charts for previous reincarnations of Russia mm. and see how it uh, how those degrees might show up mm. you know, yeah we see it in the 1991 chart yeah which is the last reincarnation of yeah. Russia and there's a lot to say about an upcoming reincarnation of Russia and this uh, all eastern bloc which you know mm -hmm. it's quite probable there have been studies about it and if you want if we have time later we can mention them yeah yeah I, it is very interesting i just want to echo one part of you talking about it's not about the whole situation but it rather rather than study metal about uh, about the chart like uh, you mentioned about putin that's the one reason i hardly using his chart because there's the doubts there but yeah. uh, like you say <clears throat> we testify we, we try yeah. it. We run the transit progression. We said, and if that works, like uh, quite interesting. I, I really re remember uh, that that was over the weekend when we heard about, is that weekend or early, early this week, when we heard about the whole news about the nuclear plant uh, uh, mm. uh, event, and we start to try to find the date and the time. 
And uh, we, we were, I think we were beginning with the, um, not construction chart, was commission chart. We are beginning with commission yeah. chart. And then, <clears throat> and then we both feel like, yeah, that one, okay, but not really, yeah. that doesn't yeah. really speak. But, exactly. and usually I agree with you. I, I have to say, usually I probably will not use the, they started construction. That would be too early for me, but uh, it works. So if it works, it has something related to whole event, then we should learn, we should use it. Like for example, yeah. you say, Putin's shot, a lot of us try to doubt the resource or something, but if it speaks to you and it works for you, you test it yeah. and you know, and it's valid. I think I like that. So for now there is a question, where is Russia heading to? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question, yeah. yeah. But there, there is a, a long, a long term trend can be um, cited here, and that's a, a very interesting. But be, before I get there, maybe a short parenthesis on what you just said, just a few seconds regarding testing charts. Mm -hmm. And it's always good, as you said, and just adding some few words, yeah. good to keep on testing them. Because now yeah. we see that in these days, putting chart, the one, the time we have, timing mm -hmm. that we have, seems to work. But until we see a clear uh, birth certificate. I, I haven't seen it myself. I don't know mm. if you've seen it, but mm. I don't think it's out there. Yeah. We should always question because this idea of questioning and having critical thinking is what is unfortunately uh, missing out there in the astrological world. And, uh, and this is this is something that comes straight from the academic world. It should always be there, especially mm. mundane astrologers, mm. astrologers mm -hmm. who do serious psychological astrology work, you know. Yep. So in, in, in all, I would say in all fields of astrology, we should always keep a critical mind, question. There is a, too much of a um, tendency mm -hmm. in certain parts yeah. uh, of this world where astrology is taught and practiced to adhere to dogmas directly. Yeah. I think astrology is much more fruitful and it promises to grow faster when we just question what yeah. we see. Even yeah. if it makes sense, great. But still, part of me has to be a little bit skeptical so that I can question it mm -hmm. and go further, deeper into it. Mm. So with that said, um, yeah, great question. Russia, where is it headed? Yeah. Obviously, we are at the end of the Southern Neptune cycle, the mm -hmm. current one. Yeah. That's a major, major statement. This is not something that comes straight from my research. Mm -hmm. Decades ago, many decades ago, astrologers such as mainly André Barbot in France yeah. actually did a, uh, gathered a massive amount of uh, data on historical cycles, including Russia's historical mm -hmm. cycles. And he observed how at every Saturn Neptune conjunction, pretty much since the birth of socialism mm -hmm. in the mid 1800s, yes. when Marx came out with his ideas at uh, around that Saturn Neptune conjunction, every time there has been a new step forward, which is obviously a death and a rebirth somehow, a transformation, a, a moment of turning the page for the mm -hmm. socialist utopian ideal. Obviously, mm -hmm. then in 1917, that got transformed into a, a communist dream that actually eventually it became, you know, the dictatorship that we we came to know about in history. But yeah. then we go to the mid 50s when Stalin died at the next Southern Neptune conjunction. Another major moment, mm -hmm. another major turning point for uh, Russia, and obviously the 19, uh, the late 1980s. Yeah. Saturn Neptune conjunction, which coincided with an alignment of Jupiter and Uranus, um, that was massive, that was huge. Mm. And obviously, because, and here I'm quoting uh, Andre Barbold actually, um, because it, it coincided with a major phase in the Saturn Uranus cycle, so a, a conjunction, so a new Saturn Uranus cycle, there were two major worlds were going through major points, mm. uh, turning mm. point. That was America, the, 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 the capitalist bloc, Uranus. Mm -hmm. Uh, Saturn, Uranus, and the communist socialist mm. socialist block, the Saturn Neptune block. Obviously, those two cycles coming together at a certain moment in history, boom, there was a huge turning point. And the way it unfolded, you mm. never know the way it can unfold. You can predict a rebirth, you can predict a dismantlement in the, mm -hmm. in, in the works, but you never quite know what's coming next. But you can predict that there's going to be a chapter change. So 
the way it worked is that the Soviet Union collapsed. We know that, you know, Germany was yeah. one of the countries which was majorly affected by that outside of Russia. Obviously, Russia changed a lot. But uh, then there was a new chapter. This is the important thing. Putin didn't come immediately couldn't arrive in the in the late 1990s mm -hmm. early 2000s he was already in power and it's uh, interesting to observe that there was a Uranus connection between the 1917 October revolution and the arrival of Putin mm -hmm. who is uh, uh, one of those who actually still speaks of the fact that the late 1980s early 1990s were a major um, step back, set back for uh, Russia. So the fall of the Soviet Union wasn't something, it's never been something that made him happy. So interesting that Putin arrives exactly one year in a cycle after the 1917 revolution. Mm -hmm. Obviously we have seen in astrology, and I, I would repeat it for those who are not very familiar with astrological thinking, that the two events are not necessarily directly related, <laughs> but they are relate astrologically because they relate to the beginning and the end of a cycle and now we are heading towards the end of that cycle that started in 1989-1990 the Saturn Neptune cycle mm -hmm. Saturn is already in Pisces together with Neptune they will be chasing each other in and out of Aries in a few years and then they will conjunct uh, they will be conjunct in early Aries that's a very sensitive point you I guess you agree with me in mundane astrology, yeah. the vernal point, zero areas or zero of cardinal signs, <laughs> very, very sensitive. That's going to be a very uh, significant moment for Russia. But I wouldn't point, pinpoint a month or a specific year. Mm -hmm. It's a phase that has started already as Saturn and Neptune. You know, it's a gradient we are building towards the conjunction. So we are in the balsamic phase of mm. the Saturn Neptune. Cycle. Mm. And when we look mm. at balsamic phases or conjunctions in early um, waxing phases, uh, uh, the early stage of the waxing Amy cycle, we can also look at what uh, a philosopher uh, thought um, in the in the in the in the mid 1900s. If I uh, quote Eliade, who was a cosmologist, mm -hmm. he spoke in one of his studies of um, the eternal return, the regeneration of time in society. And he spoke of how also in religion and celebration, mm -hmm. there is a trend that has been there for, you know, since archaic times, he says, uh, in which when uh, the cosmogony is uh, reproduced, which means, mm -hmm. you know, in the big festivals, such as the New Year, for instance, historically mm -hmm. was seen by many cultures across the world, you know, even in uh, ancient Sumerian, uh, mm -hmm. in the ancient Sumerian civilization, was seen as a moment of regeneration. You know, as the purging ah. of the sins, as the rebirth. You know, so in the moment of social rebirth is normally preceded. You know, when mm -hmm. it comes to the festival that is repeated every time to repeat that moment of creation from a celebration, uh, celebrational mm -hmm. point of view, uh, it's normally preceded by a moment of grief social collective grief, humiliation, etc, etc. He mentions one of the myths from Sumerian times uh, of Marduk, for instance, you know, when the king is sent to the middle of, uh, to the underworld, what they saw yeah. in the underworld, inside of a mountain, humiliated mm -hmm. by the dragon. And there's always this idea of the hero needs to fight against the dragon mm -hmm. and the dragon needs to be defeated. So that moment, it's comparable to the passion of Christ, for instance, in Christianity. Mm -hmm. And then we get to Easter, the moment of rebirth, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. You see, this idea of rebirth is very much the mythology that stands back, stands behind what uh, the conjunction is, mm -hmm. after all. You know, the conjunction is a moment of rebirth, and it's preceded by a moment of what Eliade calls as chaos, you know, chaotic. That's mm -hmm. the pre-creation chaos. So I think we are in the chaotic moment in Russia. That's where Russian is. And it's obviously, it's not something fun uh, from a collective point of mm -hmm. view because the collapse, the possible collapse of such a major, um, major nation would uh, probably bring changes of a colossal mm -hmm. type, you know, and the upcoming trans 
transits, slow transits, seem to speak volumes about that. Yeah, it is. Thank you for bringing this a uh, beautiful uh, philosophical view about the rebirth, and uh, and I think that is totally valid because I think thirty, uh, I mean thirty three, thirty three, three three years ago, when the beginning of that triple conjunction is never exact, but uh, the, the we 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 like to call it triple conjunction, like uh, Saturn, Uranus, and then the Neptune, and uh, that that was the time when the whole East Europe start to you know the, the whole soviet union system start to crumble and start shaking and now we're going to face another one and that and that was very interesting because you mentioned about balsamic period balsamic phases about this uh, certain uh neptune cycle we know this is the time uh if anything doesn't work we should kind of let go of it and that we are seeing it we are seeing it uh uh, yeah, thank you for, for bringing that very important key uh, notion about the the Saturn Neptune uh, Saturn Neptune's uh, the main theme with this kind of socialism and also included with the uh, whole whole Soviet and the uh, Russia uh, development and that was so interesting because we can expect now we can see now we can see because most people say what what does this for and now we can see. It's kind of a, if we see whole, uh, whole things after uh, 18, uh, 18, 89, things are kind of a, let's say, an experience, an experiment, maybe not, but a social experiment or political system experiment for that area. Now we start to see the result, either <laughs> Ukraine. Ukraine or Russia, they are they are kind of uh, experience the different system, different way for their political system, and now it's come to the kind of uh, end of that time, and they they are going to make decision where they go. And yes. uh, I really I really thinking you're right. It, you we we give it a time. It may like around that time we're going to see something to start mm -hmm. it again or something, but. We are not going to say exactly going to happen and what months and what we can, when yeah. times comes we can co go get closer we will see the whole situation what's the reality and we're going exactly. to check the much detail then we can start yeah. to pinpoint but now we are like a, it's not going to happen what day what time and let's not forget the alignment of faster planets with the uh, mm. forming conjunction yeah obviously you know mm -hmm. well let's not forget that the nodes are going yeah. into various Libra. Yeah. So if you want, we can mention that, you know, with the South Node entering Libra, what first comes to mind for, for mm -hmm. Monday in astrology, astrologer, is that all sorts of alliances that we know about right now mm -hmm. might shift. Mm -hmm. And the way we see our future, military future, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this, this, uh, this, uh, Right now, many countries are running to arms again. You know, mm -hmm. like this, it's a, it's happening. And now, with the North Node going into Aries, mm -hmm. this is going to bring uh, probably further insights. And I always like to say the nodal transits are very important, especially mm -hmm. if we keep in mind that they bring eclipses. Let's be honest. Sometimes yeah. you might go through a nodal transit, <laughs> and this is my view from my experience, mm -hmm. and it's. It's slow, obviously, and then it depends also on what kind of node you use, the mean, mm -hmm. or the true node. They're very profound, obviously, but sometimes they're very subconscious, yeah. these transits. But they yeah. become super conscious once an eclipse hits on a planet that is mm -hmm. in the signs yeah. uh, where uh, they are, uh, obviously, you know, uh, where you have something, you know. So if the nodes are crossing Aries Libra, you've got something important in your chart mm -hmm. or in a mundane mm -hmm. chart in Aries or Libra. Mm. Once the eclipse comes, everything comes up. It's yeah. like a box open. Exactly. Right? So that's something else to keep in mind. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's quite fascinating that right now that we have this geopolitical situation, which yeah. is quite unstable, we add mm -hmm. on top of that a transit of the South Node in Libra. You see, mm -hmm. if yeah. you add this, everything has to be seen in context. And mm -hmm. this is when astrology becomes very meaningful. You mm -hmm. add this transit of the South Node in Libra, mm -hmm. which will question, mm -hmm. and then, you know, uh, undoubtedly will question uh, the karmic past of all these alliances that we know about. Yeah. So, 
once you add it on top of the current transits and the fact that Russia is coming to another major turning point mm. and that there is a major war in Eastern Europe, which is always, every single day, it is potentially dangerous for mm. the world at large because it is. I mean, it's a, you, if we saw Ukraine as a hotspot for decades, I mean, what do we see now? It's not a hotspot. It's a super hotspot, you know, yeah. obviously. There's a whole war going on yes. there. And with, you know, the American bloc, the, the Western bloc, actually, it's not, I shouldn't say the American bloc, but the Western bloc is feeding arms and everything. Yep. Yeah. So it, yep. it is a constant confrontation mm -hmm. and it is kind of global. Yep. Yep. So uh, if, you know, if, if we have a lot of astrologers following uh, this podcast, I would invite them if they really want to dig deeper mm -hmm. from a personal point of view, um, it's just a piece of practical advice, which I think always helps. You know, practicality mm -hmm. always helps in astrology. Yes. They want to dive deeper into mm -hmm. this idea of the balsamic phase of the current Saturn yeah. uh, cycle. They can go check their own progressed lunar phases. Mm -hmm. The progressed lunar cycle always speaks volumes about what's going on in your life. So they can check their previous balsamic phases they mm -hmm. might have had a different number according to their age mm -hmm. you know just before you get a progress new moon which is mm -hmm. when you really turn the page and it happens every 28 27 years mm -hmm. so it's good to check it's, it's good to check what's what happened during those couple of years before preceding a uh, progress new moon from a personal point of view they look at their personal life and that's and then you apply by that teaching that you get from your own chart as an astrologer mm -hmm. to what's happening in Russia right now. And there you go. And there you get the balsamic face, what it really means when you see things crumbling and you still think you can float, but then at some point you're still going to be floating, but in a different way, maybe without realizing it, you're on a different life raft all of a sudden. So I think this is where uh, Russia is uh, standing right now and it's just you know we we like to say we like i mean the world right now likes to say russia because it's so easy to say russia <laughs> but i think it will bring with it mm. all those countries which were uh reshaped from a yep. social and political point of view and ideological i would say in the 1990s mm. you know romania ukraine yeah. obviously mm -hmm. you know belarus as well a lot of countries, you know, which were part of the uh, Eastern Eastern Bloc, mm -hmm. they were actually, you know, they reached their independence all of a sudden. Mm. So they have in their charts, they have Saturn yeah. in early yes. Aquarius. Yes. What about Pluto going over that degree very soon, pretty much at the same time as Saturn and Neptune being conjunct? Mm. So don't you see in a Pluto transit, Mm. simultaneous Pluto transit to the Saturn mm. of many nations. It's not mm. just one. It's the, 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 <laughs> the degree of this thing is quite colossal, actually. Yeah. I like to use this word in this case. Because it seems to me that the structure, mm. the solidity, the safety of many of these countries, which, mm. guess what, they're all bordering Russia, yeah. more or less. Right? And then yeah. You know, this is, it might all be questioned. Mm. And let's not forget that Germany was reshaped in 1991. Yeah. So what about that? I don't know. I don't know at the stage, but something to keep in mind, the yeah. Germany, the, 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 the German chart was, uh, the last German chart yeah. is from 1991, so. Yeah, wow. It, it, it is true. I mean, uh, there's, you, you, there's so many points as valid. I hope our audience can really just catch up. I like the way you say, go to observe personal a balsamic period. And so we will totally understand the, what does the balsamic faces uh, mean for us and then apply it to Russia. I think that is a brilliant idea to learn, to understand, even if our audience are not into political or modern astrology. That still can apply to a lot of a situation. I mean, every end of a cycle. I mean, astrology, we as a cycle is a big part. It's a huge part. I don't want to say all a part, but a huge part of our study. Uh, yeah. We study the, the beginning of cycle and the, how it evolved and the eventually how it ends. And then 
that is so important and that worth to pay attention, not only in Mandan astrology, in any sort of astrology. It's really, really good to know. And also thank you for mentioning that East European situation because yes, that is true. It's not just Russia, it's not just Ukraine. I think it's everything, every, uh, all that region is related to we talk about that triple conjunction and we the Pluto move uh, kind of a step is going to step into the uh, Aquarius again uh, we know that that from Asia we haven't talked about you know China that is a another hot potato or super, a, super story, yeah. spot. <laughs> if we go there we are going to stay here until like um, tomorrow or something but uh, it was to look at it because China has the they are ascendant at uh, five degree Aquarius and then the uh, moon in three degree Aquarius. Yeah. So, you know, when the thing's going... They, we can uh, tell our audience um, yeah, that yeah. there's something quite important. And I, I put this in uh, in my small book that I published yeah. last year, the one yeah. on Outer Cycles Beyond Pluto. In that book, I explored cycles of the trans-Neptunians, the dwarf planets, mm -hmm. some of the dwarf planets that been discovered at the turn of the millennium. Cool. Cool. Uh, but there is also, uh, there, there are a few chapters about the, the known synods, yeah. the known cycles, yeah. such as Saturn, Pluto, and all mm -hmm. that. So it's, it's just to clarify for our audience, I'm not going mm -hmm. deep into that. Maybe it's the subject of another <laughs> discussion. Sure. It will be too much, obviously. But Saturn and Pluto mm -hmm. met together with Jupiter. So it was mm -hmm. a triple conjunction in 2020 i guess we are most of us are aware of that yeah and the, there have been studies by previous astrologers mm -hmm. made by previous astrologers in previous decades when i didn't even exist mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so this this is a there's a long wisdom here like ancient mm -hmm. uh, this not ancient but old wisdom in this case and uh, one of them was a uh, barbold obviously yes he spoke about saturn and pluto in mm -hmm. their cycle being related to the development of china Let's yes. not forget that 2020, in the crisis, it was a moment of rebirth of China. So yes. this is this can give our audience an example mm -hmm. of how uh, a major conjunction, which relates to the main archetypal structure mm -hmm. of a society, right? Uh, how it can uh, basically trigger a major shift. Mm -hmm. And we think about the economic situation uh, of China at the end of yeah. 2020. I've read some reports. Obviously, everything is questionable. There is always some. Uh, there are always a lot of question marks around the statistics and stuff. But yeah. it's, it's interesting. I find it interesting that many uh, many scholars find the situation with China to have bettered, to have become better mm -hmm. after uh, the Jupiter Saturn Pluto mm. conjunction mm -hmm. of uh, yeah. 2020. So in that book, I specified if a, an actual takeover, an economic and uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't think that it might be a cultural takeover by China because that mm -hmm. would be, that, that, that's not something related to the times we are living in. I think that's more about maybe if it happens, it could be another cyclical swing mm -hmm. of the idea, the main ideology, the main philosophy, which can occur in the course of several centuries. I'm talking about centuries, mm -hmm. there, so that's something different. But if there is an economic takeover at some point, yeah. Uh, Obviously, take over from the U.S., which so far has been the leading economy, uh, it's pretty much since uh, Second World War, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, if we really want to be uh, specific. That might happen between the Saturn-Uranus conjunction of the early 2030s, mm -hmm. which will represent some kind of change, shift or rebirth I for agree. the capitalist the society, the Western society as we know it. And the Saturn-Pluto uh, square of the 2040s. Because that's the, you know, the the waxing square, mm. the moment of mm. crisis. The, what uh, Dane Rudyer will call as the moment of edification of consciousness, in the in the in the process of the Saturn Pluto mm -hmm. uh, cycle that started in 2020. Mm. So if there was a conjunction in 2020 and it signaled some kind of rebirth for China, you know, what about how about we look at the square mm. at the waxing mm. square? And obviously, then the opposition, which might be the moment of culmination of this process. So everything is very slow. But if something really degenerates with Russia over the next couple of years, mm -hmm. such as is foreseeable because of the Saturn Neptune cycle, as we have yeah. discussed it, well, then the next two big things to look at are the obviously 
the, in terms of cycles, cyclical yeah. movements, not just, you know, plants ingresses into science, that's a very different thing, and they're equally very, very important. But looking at the bigger picture, mm. you know, we look at the cyclical development, so Saturn Uranus in, uh, in late yeah. Gemini, mm. uh, later on mm. in the decade, actually at the turn of the new decade, 2030s, and then in the 2040s, the square mm. of Saturn and Pluto. Mm. One relating to America, yeah. which is also yeah. approaching next Uranus return, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> very mm. important. And then, so we have a very packed decade, rest of the decade, I, I, I think. And then the, yeah. there's a lot to see. There's a lot to come, probably. Yeah, yeah. Wow, thank you, Stefano. I mean, every time when I run the broadcast with you, I was just like, I have to try think about the things I read before and uh, they say, oh, there's a lot of things going on here. And then you are, God, your knowledge is immense. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you. you can, you can quote them in this way. I would like, I have to go back, like why you were talking about, I went back to check in a, check in a few pages. I go, oh yes, he did say that. Yes. I mean, that is amazing. Thank you so much to spend your time today to, to with us and to bring those amazing observation and uh, your study and also i mean uh, you mentioned about uh, your book is on amazon right yes, yes yeah yes. Yeah, all so, the links so are available you... in the bio of my yeah, could, could you give us yes. the name again the book's name again so the the, the first one is the cosmic journey mm -hmm. it's more of an inspirational book it is very technical as well okay. but it, uh, it kind of summarizes my understanding of our connection with the collective okay. uh, part of the cosmos yeah. that we use, mainly the outer planets, obviously. And the other one also deals with the outer planetary cycles, but it's yeah. more specific, uh, probably more um, uh, directed towards an astrological uh, community, uh, astrological mm -hmm. uh, readers, uh, because it deals with what I was just talking talking about the cyclical developments mm -hmm. and the tapestry of cyclical developments. Wow. Including all the three main outer planets mm -hmm. and uh, some other uh, planets which have been discovered at the turn of the millennium, the mm -hmm. so-called dwarf planets, dwarf planets, you know, yeah. since uh, Pluto mm -hmm. has been demoted mm -hmm. by the mm -hmm. astronomical community. Mm. Okay, well, thanks so much. And uh, well, I'm, I'm really looking forward next time we're going to meet each other again here and uh, talk about some interesting topic. And then, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to work with you. And uh, thanks everyone to spend time with us. And uh, I, have to I have to remind everyone, if you have time this evening, me and the Monday and the Marcus, we're going to have a, our uh, monthly, regular monthly podcast on the YouTube AOA UK one. If you have time, please join us. Okay. Thanks everyone. And thank you again, Stefano. You're amazing. Thank so you. have a nice weekend. Bye. Till next time. Bye.